Hi everyone, I'm Nick Packham from Worcestershire Wildlife Trust and I'm talking to you today to introduce to you a short video that is looking at different bee species that you're most likely to see in Worcestershire. Now nationally there are about 270 odd different bees but we're not going to be looking at all of those today. We're just going to be looking at some of the different types that you might likely see in your gardens or when you're out on your daily walks. Now. This is a great time of year, spring's a good time of year to be out looking for bees because many of them have just emerged from hibernation and they will be out there looking for nectar and looking for, in many cases, looking for nesting sites. So this video is only introductory level, it is going to only be looking at a few different types of bees but we will be producing more stuff and um, Worcestershire Wildlife Trust will be producing more material on bees, insects and other wildlife over the next coming weeks and months, all under the doorstep wildlife umbrella, which is basically just encouraging people to have a little look around for wildlife that's in and around where they live, um, mostly their back gardens or wildlife that they might see when they're out walking. So do have a look at this short video and do stay tuned for other material that Worcestershire Wildlife Trust will put out there. Um, I've been Nick Packham and thanks very much for listening. Okay, kicking off the bee video then with probably my favourite bees, Bombus, the bumblebees. 24 to 25 different species of bumblebee in the UK. This is a buff tail bumblebee that has just emerged from hibernation. I captured this footage back in early spring. The buff tail bumblebee has that buffish white tail that you can just see there on the end of the bee. And again, it's moving quite slowly because it has just emerged from hibernation. Another buff tail bumblebee. This one, though, is absolutely caked in pollen. It had just finished visiting a crocus plant when I shot this footage, and it's having a bit of a clean. But again, buff tail bumblebee is probably one of the most common species of bumblebee that we have in Worcestershire. Now, this is some footage that I've slowed down of an early bumblebee. Similar to the buff tail bumblebee in patterns only, it does have that reddish tail, that reddish tip um, to the abdomen there. So this is the early bumblebee, which is slightly smaller than the buff tail bumblebee as well. It's just feeding on some borage. And you can see it just kind of buzzing around, looking for which plants, which flowers have that nectar that they need. And this is a male bumblebee. This is a male early bumblebee. It's got that kind of much more obvious yellow stripe along the shoulder and it does have yellow patches on its face as well. So males tend to emerge a bit later on in the year. Will be smaller in size to queens usually, um, but the males play that pivotal role in kind of helping to reproduce for the next generation of bumblebees. And this is a common carder bee. So there are a few different carder bees in the, in the Bombus family. This is probably the most common and definitely the most common in Worcestershire, the common carder bee. It has some black hairs on its body as well as the kind of gingery mane and gingery stripes across the body. And this one's feeding on um, lungwort again, again lungwort such a good early flowering plant for queens for spring bees to feed on. Looking at mason bees now, so this is the red mason bee, Osmia bicornis. Now in the family Osmia there are a number of species but the red mason bee for Worcestershire is arguably the most common, it is the one that you are most likely to see. Now, this is the bee that you find mostly nesting in your bee homes or in holes in deadwood. Here you can see um, good footage of the female and the male. The female is underneath, it is larger, uh, it has that more kind of obvious black head and it does have two horns kind of poking out that not all the Osmia species tend to have and then the male is the smaller bee on top. So here's just a little bit of footage of my bee home, the one that I've got at home in my garden. And as you can see, they're just kind of going into that nests in the, the tiny cavities in the bee home there. So those are all Osmia bicornis. Moving forward then to the mining bees, Andrina, one of the largest bee families we have in the UK. Most of which are quite varied and quite different from each other. This is a female that we have in the picture here. 
and it does have the kind of elaborate pollen brush on the back leg. You can see all of the yellow hairs there. Now these are bees that do nest in the ground in tiny holes that they dig out themselves. This now is footage of Andrina fulva, the tawny mining bee. Unmistakable really for any of the other mining bees. And um, this is the female. They do have that very bright color, um, ginger and red colors there with mostly kind of black face and black legs. So this species is quite unmistakable. And we've kind of caught it in action here, digging out its nest where it's going to live and where it's going to reproduce its young. This is a male ashy mining bee, Andrina cineraria. A little bit smaller than the female. The female is a, a bit larger, a bit rounder. The males seem to be a bit more elongate. This one is feeding on dandelion, a key spring flower, as most of these bees are spring um, emerging, spring flying bees. So this bee is the scarce black mining bee, quite a rare bee for Worcestershire. It's mainly found up in Kidderminster. And, and around Heathen there but this is a good example of the pollen brushes because those yellow clumps on the back legs there that they are big clumps of pollen that the bee will then take back to its nest to feed its young so these are Andrina these are all mining bees and following on with that then a look at nomad bees so nomad bees are parasitic bees they parasitize the 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 Andrina the mining bees They'll go into a into a nest of a mining bee, lay its egg, and then that egg will emerge before the mining bee eggs, and then the larvae then will consume the pollen before the mining bees have a chance to get any food. So the nomada, although harmless to humans, are quite are quite dangerous. They're like the arch nemesis of the mining bees, um, and they do look quite menacing as well with the yellow and black stripe abdomen and the red antennae in most cases they do look like they are quite troublesome but as I say again to humans completely harmless and you'll often find them where there are large numbers of mining bees so whether that's in a loose soil bank or um, in a lawn anywhere like that where you have other mining bees nesting you are likely to find um, one of these guys so just wanted to touch on on the cuckoo bees then the parasitic bees no mada. Calites, the plasterer bees. Now these bees do form a plaster-like substance and line their nests with it, which gives them the name plasterer bees. Most are yellow and black striped. This is the ivy bee. This is Calites hedera. Now this bee is really interesting because it does tend to be out later on in the year as it feeds off of um, the nectar and pollen from ivy. They nest in quite large numbers, as you can see here. This is a lady's garden, and and you can see them all just kind of buzzing around in massive numbers. So these are Kalitas ivy bees, and the best time to see them is around September. Now then, looking at some of my favourite bees, the hairy-footed flower bees, Anthopora plumipes. Now they're my favourite mainly because they always seem very industrious. They're always buzzing around from flower to flower very quickly. These are the females, um, the darker colour of the of the two. They do look a little bit like small bumblebees, but they are all black and they have some lighter um, colour hairs on the legs. So could be mistaken for bumblebees, but again, they are buzzing around there a lot quicker. The males, lighter in colour with that kind of gingery looking fur. And they do have a yellow kind of mark on the face as well. And it's the males that have the hairiest feet out of the two. So it's something to definitely look out for in these species. Looking now then at the yellow faced bees. Now I'll put these in there because you have to be quite careful because these bees can look a bit like some solitary wasps. And they have very little hairs on them. So you can almost see like the black um, shiny head, thorax and abdomen. But they are actually tiny bees. Moving on to a non-bee. Now these are bee wolves. And I've put them in there because they are associated with bees as they do prey on honeybees. Here you can see there's a honeybee almost strapped to the underside of this um, wasp. They are wasps, they are solitary wasps and they are quite impressive. Moving on to another non-bee and this is the bee fly. 
Now they do look a bit like bumblebees. They are quite furry, quite large when you see them out there buzzing around on plants. This is the dotted bee fly as it's got very tiny dots on its wings that you can't really see very well there because they are flapping so fast. Um, but again, it's a similar sort of size to a bumblebee, maybe a bit smaller, but it has got that long proboscis that bumblebees don't have permanently poking out. And the bee flies also got those kind of bulging eyes at the front of its head without any, any antennae. Now that is one of the main features that separates the um, bees and the flies is the fact that the and flies don't have any antennae like you can see there. There are no antennae and those eyes are quite large on the head. So it's just buzzing around on on the lung work there looking for nectar. So a non-bee but it's easily confused. Well that's the end of the short video. I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching. I hope it encourages some of you to go out and look at the different bees that you might find in your own garden and when you're out walking. Do keep an eye on other stuff that we're publishing and the Worcestershire Wildlife Trust is, is sending out. Um, and do also follow the doorstep wildlife hashtag. So thanks again for watching. See you later.